Welcome to the Power Outlet, Power Outage, blog number, something or the other, and we have a creation going. So, I of course can't help myself but to entertain myself with weird technical things when I have nothing better to do. So, I have acquired an old car radio to have had it sitting uh, outside in the barn for a long time. It's from some Land Rover, I think, from the, gosh, 70s maybe? Uh, it should be in reasonable condition, some signs of leakage, but uh, I don't think it's going to be too major. And uh, we have some garden hosing and a bilge pump. <laughs> uh, so uh, the plan is to just put this bilge pump into the hot water part of the uh, stove there and uh, run hot water through uh, the radiator, which is going to come out of this end then. And uh, everything is the wrong size, so I've just used duct tape and zip ties to uh, basically cobble everything together. So that's the uh, inlet side, I believe, and uh, over there we have the outlet. Yeah, the, the, this is the outlet, is the fatter one because it didn't fit as well onto the bilge pump. Uh, it should be reasonably well done and it's pretty good duct tape, I'm not too worried about leakage. Uh, here though we have uh, two pieces of uh, wine cork and duct tape which uh, I've had to pop in to close up the uh, like something supposed to go there obviously in the vehicle but yeah we're, we're pretty much ready to uh, uh, dunk this thing into the hot water and see what happens I have a working lab power supply going so uh, we can slowly run the voltage we probably don't want to run full power. Uh, the hoses are also full of ice because I just took them uh, from each side so we have uh, ice chunks everywhere. But yeah let's uh, see if if we can get some heat transfer going. The hoses should be long enough to reach upstairs if the pump doesn't melt in the like 60 sea water but that's that's and we'll see we'll see. Okay, so we're all set up. The power going to the pump, and the return line is going into the stove. Well, that's okay. Let's just see what happens. Blob. Okay, that's water going. The line start heating up. Or the eight line anyway. It's turning quite soft. There's a bunch of ice in here, so I'm expecting it to take a while for it to actually reach a radiator. This garden hose is getting re <laughs> really soft doing this. Pump's just drawing about 10 watts, so that's not too bad. Line is softening up all over. Let's do that, there's flow. There's a leak at the uh, connector, so there's water going that far. Just listen to that. That's the sound of ice beaming through the radiator. And plopping out here. So this, this output line is ice cold right now. And there's like, sometimes there's ice chunks just plopping down into the hot water. Ah, time to keep the motor at about 10 watts. There's some ice chunks. Plop, plop. Still need to get this leak source a bit better. But uh, more duct tape, more zip ties. I think we'll have it. Oh, it's warming up. It is warming up. That's amazing. Forty C. Oh yeah. <laughs> amazing. Gonna be warm tonight. And look at that. 
of a coolest gun, but the buzz of a pump remains. And we have the hoses moving away, so... Uh, it's been so many hours working over kinks on this thing, but I think we finally have some form of working system. So, I've got the motor running at 10 volts. Yeah. Had a bit of an issue before where it wouldn't want to pump the water all the way up the stairs, but uh, it seems to have fixed itself with some brutal forcing. Had it up to 20 volts just to just force a bit of flow to start, and after that it's been fine. So, let's follow the money, or rather our hose as it looks like we have a rogue <laughs> uh, a rogue garden worker what's a proper term for that? janitor rogue janitor running around and there we have it now I forgot the IR gun downstairs but uh, there it is a warm feel to this. Uh, it's certainly uh, adding a lot of heat to the room. So when I start, when when I first put this here, uh, we were at uh, 10.7 C. That was a couple of hours ago. Now we're at 11.3. So we are having an effect on heat in the house. Well, this room, but that's fine because that's right underneath my bedroom. So. I'll just have to keep working the fire for another while and then maybe I'll be somewhat safe. Curiously the leaks seem to have cured themselves. We don't seem to have any leakage going on anymore. Uh, save for the dodgy radiator gap here that's leaking around the gasket because well there is no gasket. Uh, but yeah, all this stuff dries a bone. Surprisingly, I have the uh, collection vessels underneath anyway, just in case. So, uh, when I started, I thought I'd put the intake at the bottom and the uh, outlet at the top, but I'd actually accidentally done it the, <coughs> the other way around, uh, and uh, that was actually the intake, and that didn't work very well because any air that entered through this horrible, leaky, uh, crappy radiator, it's full of oxidation where it's been leaking when it was in the vehicle uh, all of that air just got trapped in here and the water level would go down and down since uh, the pump is so weak there's more pull on the outlet than push on the inlet almost uh, but yeah the pump couldn't keep up with just keeping this pressurized it was at negative pressure it seems it was sucking in air rather than leaking out water perhaps that's why the leaks have cured themselves because it's so low pressure that the water just it doesn't want to go go anywhere. Ah, but yeah, got two 140 mil uh, PC fans back there, just providing a gentle breeze through it. I was initially going to put it on the actual radiator, but we have so little flow through this matter. Those tiny fans actually overpower the whole thing, uh, and we get a bit more efficiency by just having a breeze going to the entire thing uh, so we, I'll have to fetch the IR gun and we can see what kind of temperature drop we have over this okay IR gun acquired so let's see uh, so that's the outlet there 29C and the inlet we have 20 what? what have I done wrong? Let's just measure that. It's aluminium, so it's, it is paint away, so it should measure reasonably well. 27 on that side. And 30 on that side, so we have 3 degrees of drop. Almost 31 going there. 30.6 right of inlet. And right of the outlet we have. 27.4 so not super high temps uh, is due to the low like the thermal capacity of the stove or the thermal capacity of a pump are not very high but uh, that's still uh, about 20 C over ambient so it's gonna make a difference I, I, I 
I'm hearing bubbles. But yeah, since the outlet is on this side now, it's uh, not going to be as susceptible to bubbles. I have a bit of an issue where bubbles coming out of the outlet they get taken back up by the pump and go back around a few times. It's, uh, the tank is a bit difficult to really get working properly in that regard. But yeah, for like a couple of hours emergency build, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm quite happy with this. Especially since I'm not feeling quite uh, on top of the world. I have a cold and having a cold in the cold is not where you want to be. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Emergency heater. Cheerio. Enjoy yourself.